Henry. Okay. And I brought my artwork. I'm a generative artist. I'm okay. also an informal science educator. And I brought my nonprofit Galaxy Goo and my team of volunteers who are not here yet. Okay. But we teach kids how to build 3D models of cells from the inside out with colorful clay. Oh, okay, so and you teach actual cells. Okay. Actual cells. We build models of them. And yesterday, they, they kept coming by and giving us more ribbons. Oh, cool. So you got to love that. Three of them. <laughs> Yay, congratulations. You can even see it happening. That's wonderful. Now, uh, from, from the perspective of generative art, maybe people don't know what that is. Could you explain that a little bit to me? It's uh, probably most people are more familiar with fractal art. Okay. But I'm not building fractals. The okay. similarity is that I'm using algorithms and code and mathematics to okay. generate uh, artwork. Oh, cool. And so tell me a little bit about, uh, let's say that you were creating something like these these pieces that you have right here. You know, okay. the circles and the and so, the different flavors of things. Yeah. Well, how do you start? Where, where so, do you start? So they look like tree rings, which is why I call them tree rings. But they're actually the the the. This is the record of all the collisions that this particle has had in the particle system I created with my code. Oh, cool. So I write code, I okay. create the particles, right. and then I let them, I, I give them an atomic number, which okay. is some of my <laughs> chemistry influence. There you go. And the atomic number determines their color, their speed, their, their, their uh, how they react when oh, they collide perfect. with other particles. So they bounce around, they're bouncing around, it's really crazy. And then as they bounce, they exchange information, they exchange colors. Ah. So each ring is a single collision. Oh, and the thicker rings means that particle collided with particle, other particles of the same type. Oh, interesting. Now is that all, what kind of programming languages do you use to get that kind of thing to For happen? For this, I prefer Flash AS3. Okay. I oh, just, interesting. I really like working with ActionScript. And so tell me a little bit about that. Like the ActionScript, does it allow you to, to move fast enough to like make things appear on screen quickly? Well, yeah, well, I can create something that will run live and I can publish it anywhere. So I can show the actual animation that creates one of these. Oh, online. awesome. <laughs> so I mean, generally when I'm creating a piece that I'm going to print, yes. I it's not really something somebody would want to watch. Oh, interesting. Because I'll be hiding all the other particles. I just want to see this one. So okay. I'm watching the one grow. Yes. So it's not as interesting for somebody else to watch. But <laughs> I, I, and then I will adjust settings as it goes. So it's almost a sculptural process. Yeah. For, my, for myself. But I can show the process of how it works. Oh, fascinating. Now, you said that this is your first time displaying as an artist. So. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that experience. Well, I haven't really come out as an artist yet until yeah. now. Yeah. Um, I've, it's been a, an evolving process where I, I've always been an artist, but I never really uh, knew that. <laughs> I mean, I knew it, but I didn't think I was good enough to call myself an artist. <laughs> so this is the, and because my work is so chemistry and mathematically and Based, even though I'm trying to get passion in there, yeah, it's still. I thought that the Maker Fair was the perfect place to find the people who would get my art. Absolutely, because it's pretty. I mean, yeah. I have full confidence that my artwork is beautiful. Yeah, but beyond that, there's there's another level that you can appreciate it even more deeply if you understand what's going on underneath it. Oh, it's so cool. You can geek out and enjoy the art. Totally geek out. <laughs> you can geek out without even knowing that you're geeking out. <laughs> there you go. It's just That's a pretty perfect. picture. Now you're talking about uh, hands-on kind of things. And yes. how, is that hard? Is that difficult to kind of keep a balance for you? Uh, actually, I find that's what gives me my balance. Interesting. So being able to tactile. So I've done things where I've like been making jewelry. So I have. A, I like to have shiny, pretty shiny things to play with. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's not really my passion, so I can't really keep it up. But it's one of those things that keeps me balanced, keeps me physically connected with art and, and the creative process. Yeah. And I've been doing the embroidery. Can you see? Oh, that's great. So I hand embroidered 
with this. Oh, that's good. To kind of keep your keep your hand in it. Sorry. Yes, keep your hand in it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm experimenting with textiles and figuring out how... Oh, so that's shapes. right. You actually printed these. I actually printed these. And then you have another print here. And then this is the cell. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Which I use now, as the pattern to embroider. Where do you get that kind of stuff printed? Spoonflower. What is it? Spoonflower? Spoonflower? I think they're okay. here. Okay, awesome. I'm, so I'm really you happy send them a, a file and they go I ahead send them and they... a JPEG. Oh my god. File and then they can and they can do it at various resolutions. Is the same file. Uh-huh. But I it, Oh it you just blown uh, up. zoomed in on it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. But <laughs> it's really interesting that the like depending on the fabric, it's not even just the zooming in, it's the it's a whole different color realm. It is, yeah. It's very different. Like the yeah. prints are pretty much exactly as I expect. Okay. But the textile printing is different. Right. It comes it's, out with something pretty spectacularly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess, like, you probably like, have to go through a few variations. I go through many variations trying to figure out the color, the color palette, yeah. how it how it works on the fabric. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about being a mom that is also a maker. Is that does that affect anything for you? Because I think there's a lot of women out there that are trying to figure out how to juggle things. And <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, it's a juggling act. Yeah, it's. Um, and you've gone back to school as well, right? Yes. I so am, what? It, what is? It, where are you in school? I'm at the University of San Francisco, and I'm working on a master's in computer science. Oh wow! It's it's. It's challenging. I'm really glad that summer is here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my fellow students, they're all getting internships at big companies. And, you know, they say, where are you doing this summer? And I say, well, I'm really hoping to intern with my children this yeah. summer. And just really do hands on. And my kids are part of everything I do that I can let them. Obviously, when I'm writing in assembly language, they can't. <laughs> do that. Uh, no. that doesn't work very well. Yeah. I try to always have uh, art supplies around all the time so that they're this part of you know, raising maker children. Yeah, that's a great and point. <laughs> always having them around. Um, I give them scraps of fabric when they. I try to include them in whatever I'm doing when oh. it's possible. Yeah. Uh, things like when I was making these capsules. Oh yeah. So these kits, so I have other kits that my youngest, my seven-year-old was making, okay. and they'll probably just sit there, but she wanted to be part of the process. Yeah, that's so awesome. So it's sacrificing raw materials for their being able to participate yeah. in the process. Things that's like, awesome. Things like that, and you know, when they want to make dinner, they get to make dinner and we eat it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And we eat it. That's, we that's eat probably it. an important point. So I try to guide gently. My oldest is 12 now, so guiding is sometimes a delicate uh, job. Yeah. Because she wants to do her thing her way. Yeah, that's cool. Wow, well, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us for a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.